Hello, everyone. Welcome. Today is Monday, August 8th, 2022. I am Salabu Sister, and this is My Turn to Talk. Hey, Shelby, how are you? Welcome, welcome. You are number one today. Hey, Ninja Bunny, how are you? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. So, um, let's see. I am well today. Uh, Ba says to Shelby, hi, hope you are well. Was that you on our live yesterday? And we are going to get started here. I just want to make sure my phone is on do not disturb. Okay. Okay, so today we are going to talk about emancipation of minors. When minors want to be legally separated from their parents, should it be allowed or should minors be placed with a relative or foster care? And I want to add something else to this. Um, should they, well, let me say, say this first. Um, in the United States, uh, the age of majority is 18. Um, in the, UK, in the UK, it is it is 16. So my question is this, um, if a minor petitions to be uh, legally separated from their parents, um, most of the time it means that basically a minor is on their, their own. So, you know, if they are, if they're off, you know, working and, um, if they get an apartment or where, wherever they're, they're they're living and they're living on their own, supporting themselves, shouldn't they have everything that comes with being an adult if you're going to live live like one? And what I mean by that is, should a 16 year old or 18 year old um, be allowed to vote? So if we're going to um, e e emancipate this, this minor, shouldn't they also be allowed to, to vote? Um, uh, does that mean that they can, you know, go into the store and buy a pack of um, cigarettes at the age of, of, of 16? You know, um, in very few cases, you have some minors here in the U.S. who have... Um, been e emancipated as early as 14. So do you think that um, it should be a allowed for minors to uh, be able to petition to be separated from their parents? Or like, like I said um, in my question, um, should they be placed with a relative or foster care? W w welcome, Doss. Uh, let's see. Okay, Bob's responding to Shelby. Okay, so um, and also, you know, when you look at at, at, at driving and Bob, I have to to ask ask you this. Um, I know in the UK, um, 
you're no longer a minor at the age of 16. When are you allowed to drive? When can you legally get a license? Because here you can get a license when you're 16, but um, technically you still have to, you know, drive with with someone who is, I do believe is is 18 uh, before you can, you know, drive by by yourself. So should they be able to, you know, drive and, okay, so, so 17. So, okay, so again, the UK, you're, the age of majority at 16, but you can't get a driver's license until you're 17. So once again, if this, if this minor is getting a job or putting themselves through school or what, whatever, they are taking care of themselves, shouldn't they have all the benefits of everything else that, that goes with it? You know, um, should they be able to go into a in, into a pub or or a, a a bar and and order a drink? You know, you know should should they be able to um, uh, stay out? You know, past curfew. And technically, you know, not that it's always enforced, but technically a lot of cities have cur curfew. Uh, some of them are 10 p.m. Some of them, uh, I think it, 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 it varies between 10 and 12 mid midnight, you know, when minors are, are not supposed to be out. But does that mean that, you know, if you show that I'm an emancipated minor, that I should be able to, to, to stay out? So... Let's see, Bob says, some of the laws are silly like that, getting married at 16 but can't have a drink at your own wedding or you can go die for your, your country. Right, so, so um, in some cases, the military will let you sign up to go to war, <laughs> but like Bob just said, if I got married at 16, I can't have a drink at my own wedding. Let's see, and Ba says, or you can take a student loan and mess up your, your life at, at, at 16. Or not just a student loan. I mean, you, you can, you know, if you're able to get a loan for a car, whatever. You know, so should that person get all the benefits of being an, uh, being an adult? You know, I mean, what is... Is it fair that restrictions are still put put on them because of, of their age? Okay, uh, Boss says sign up for a lifetime of debt when you're still a kid and don't understand don't understand the world. Okay, so Bob, let me ask this then: since in the UK, since uh, the age of majority is um, since the age of since the age of majority is sixteen then should the age of majority be higher? You know, and for that case, you know, here in the U.S., w welcome Alpha Mike. You know, um, Bob make, make, made a point, um, you know, that you're still a kid and you don't under, understand the world. So should the age of majority across the, the board be 21? And if minors wanted to be, become emancipated from their parents or from their legal guardian should they be able to and i would say mainly because of everything that comes with being an adult or just being on on your own but to be fair to, to play both sides there are some minors who are more responsible than adults i mean there are adults you know um you know, who are older, who have completely mess, messed up their, their, their lives. And when they're 70, 80 years old, they look around, they're like, well, hell, you know, what, what did I do? And they've just always been on that course that they've always just made bad choices or whatever, for whatever reason, their life just never got on the right track where you could have a younger person who did. 
Okay, and Ba says something about your brain not being fully formed. I can remember it. I can't remember it is maybe 25. Uh, let's see, Ba also says, which is a big point in the trans issue, allowing children to make those decisions. Shelby says, I think that if they can be released into the world as an adult, why not let them have a trial period? And if they get into trouble, then they have to go back to the parents or foster care. Okay. All right. So then Shelby, let me ask this. So what if you're one of those kids for whatever reason, your parents um, kick you out, out of the house for lack of a better term, because that's what they're, they're doing. If they're kicking you out of the house, they're making you leave. Um, and you're a minor. Number one, should the parents still be responsible for that kid? Because technically they would be because that child is still a minor and legally they are still a, a, attached to, to that child. But if that child messed up and, 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 and screwed up, should the parents be forced to take this child back into their home? Or, you know, can the parents say, well, I don't want to have anything to do with them, put them in foster care, I don't care. You know, should the parents still have to take this child back? So I guess if, 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 if they, um, what I want to say, if, I guess it's a trial period that you're kicking them out, if that makes sense. I'm just going by what, what you had said be, before. Okay, Alpha says, I'm staying kid free. Ba says, I think the government or council help a lot of 15, 60 year olds here in the UK by housing them. And yes, I think they should, unless they give up their, their rights. Okay. So, okay, so Ba, you, you, you bring up another point. When the UK is housing them, I'm assuming that taxpayers are paying for that for that housing. Because I, I guess if okay, so why should I pay if the age of majority is 16? Why should I have to pay for their housing if the age of majority is 16 and they choose to leave home? shouldn't they have to pay for their own housing and what have you? And I guess what I'm saying is to me that that doesn't make, make, make sense because, you know, you know, if anything, I would say house the, the homeless or something, because why not make the Asian majority 18 or, or 21? It's called DSS. They help them find work and get settled. Okay, what 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 is the okay DSS is an acronym. What 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 does it it stand for? Okay, and Alpha says, well, you pay taxes to full to fill the greed. So is that okay? No, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. I believe me, uh, Alpha, my, my tax dollars can, I think my tax dollars can go a lot of other places than where a lot of it's going to fuel the, the greed. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, no, I mean, that's, you absolutely have a, a, a point, you know? Um, but I, I guess I'm, I'm just saying, um, Hello, Lou, Lou, Lou King. I, I guess I, I'm saying if the government in, I'm just saying for the UK, if the government is helping them, you know, get housed and get settled and, and find a job and what have you, is that something, I mean, at the age of, of, of 16, what kind of job are you going to have? So again, I say, shouldn't the government just make it where the age of majority is older. And Bob, I'm going to come back to you and ask, has the age of majority in the UK always been 16? Let me just see. And I'm going to also go back to Okay, what, what, what Shelby says, welcome the only crazy lady and, and welcome Grid. Okay, so Shelby, you say, yes, 
they should unless they give up their rights and and you're referring to what we were saying that if the parents kick their kids out, out of the house well then um uh the kids sh should be able to 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 go back home so shelby i ask you if you're going to kick your child out of the house um while they're still a minor should you automatically be required to give up your rights and should that minor automatically get emancipation welcome petty deb welcome Okay, Alpha says, why not give them housing? I say give housing to homeless. Also, humans should want to help each other, correct or no. Okay, Alpha, you're you're absolutely right. But again, I'm asking if in terms of of tax dollars that you would be paying for, I personally feel that at the age of 15 or 16 you're not ready or equipped to go out into the world um and be an adult again you have those exceptions you do have some some kids who are just they're you know wise beyond their years they are responsible like i said more responsible than than a lot of adults um but i think that's too too, too young i think that the parents should be responsible for those children and then boss says department of social security okay so that's what dss stands for so basically tax welfare even now if i lose my job tomorrow i will get my rent paid and electric and gas plus money given to me which is why a lot of people choose to stay unemployed Okay, so Bob, then let me ask ask this. So if one of these minors, um, if they accept the housing, which I'm sure they probably would if they didn't have any, anywhere to live, if they accept the housing, the government helped them get settled, and for whatever reason they chose not to work or they lost their job, then they would be getting the same type of services that you would get, like you said, if you lose your, your, your job tomorrow. I mean, we have that also. It is un, um, you know, employment insurance, but you cannot stay it on it for an extended period of, of 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 time. At some point, you're supposed to to get off of it. And if you know, um, and after that time is is up, then you're automatically taken off. And if you don't have a job or whatever by then, then 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 you're SOL. Um, Let's see. Um, what was the question about age? Okay, so basically what I'm asking is shouldn't the government um, in, in the UK, instead of doling out that money for housing at the age of 15 or 16, shouldn't they just change the age of majority to eight, 18? And Shelby says, if the uh, parents kick them out, then they become wards of, of the state. Um, and Alpha says, I'd rather pay taxes to help out a, a good cause. All right. Uh, Boss says, I don't think, uh, I don't think the government says people have to prove they are actively applying for jobs at least three a month but it's not enforced see here every time if i'm correct and and i could be be wrong um here isn't it every time you get unemployment you get a check you're supposed to fill something out saying that you are actively looking for work that you have to let them know but i do know again that it's not something that you can stay on forever it's like you know at most maybe a, a year some people stretch it out longer but after a certain amount of time then you know you know you have to you know get a job or 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 do something um or else you will be 
um, pull pull off of the um, uh, role. And Alpha says you lose your rights once you get a birth certificate and social security number. Well, yeah, that's true, because then the government can, can track you. Um, yes, okay, okay, every week. Okay, all right. So, okay, so crazy late, thanks, thanks. And you have to show that you've looked for at least three three jobs. I mean, yeah, because then, you know, then you have people who, who you know, will take advantage of, of the system. And I'm sorry, you know, you know, again, you know, your tax dollars, your tax dollars just seem to go to everything but it seems they just seem to go to to everything but um, what they are so, supposed to to go for. Hey, hey, Mama Bear, welcome, welcome. Uh, so let's see. Um, Okay, Alpha Bob is agreeing with Alpha on the Social Security comment. Okay, Lou King says, funny how the system doesn't work and lives off taxpayers and never gets anything done. And Crazy Lady says, and you're also depends on how much you have paid in. Yes, yes. So, okay. So when you look at something like DSS in the UK, unemployment you know, here, um should sh i mean should the restrictions be i don't want to say the word harsh but should they be more strict you know what if you're really what if you're that person who's really looking for a job and you cannot find a job and it's coming up on the time where you're going to get kicked off of un um, unemployment you know, should you be allowed to, to stay on if, if you show that you really have been looking for a job, whereas, you know, your next door neighbor, you know, was sort of looking for one, but not really. But there's there there's they're still on. They're still getting a um a uh, check every week. Okay, Luke King says there's plenty of, of, of jobs everywhere. Okay. But that wasn't my question. You know, um, there may be plenty of jobs now, but, you know, there are some people who were on unemployment, say, 10, 10 years ago, and they weren't able to, you know, find a, 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 a job. So I'm, I'm just saying, what if you are one of those people for whatever reason? Um, maybe the situation isn't like it is now. Maybe, you know, five, 10 years from now, you know, it won't be where there's plenty of, 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 of jobs everywhere. You know, should that person who's really, really been looking be able to stay on? Should the United States have something like the UK, where if you become an emancipated minor, that the government automatically sets you up with, with housing? Shelby says, no, the rule for one should be the rule for all. Agree. Um, then you should retrain or you should return to do something else. Yes, yes, you should, you know, but I'm playing both sides here, crazy lady. Um, but sometimes that retraining takes money. What if you don't have to have the money to, uh, to uh, do it? And Luke King says, there's, there's always work. I don't necessarily uh, uh, agree with that. Um, Alpha says unemployment does have programs to help you in job training. Okay. And Lou King says USA will never be UK. That's exactly the reason USA broke off that type of system. Uh, Grit says if there's no unemployment insurance, I bet you then would find work. And Craig Lee says, okay, unemployment will, will retrain you. Okay. All right. So um, Grit. I'm going to ask you, in New Zealand, what is it like there for emancipated minors? Or what is the age of ma ma majority? Um, is 16 in the UK? Is 18 here in, in the US? So what is the age of uh, majority? I'm going to ask you in New Zealand and also South Africa, since uh, you live in, in South Africa. I just want to get a feel for, um, in terms of uh, 
what it's like in other parts of the world. Okay, um, have it like insurance, Shelby says, a percentage comes out of your paycheck that will help that person. Okay, um, okay, all right, no problem, no problem. So, everyone, back to my original question then. If you are an emancipated minor, no matter what part of the world you live in, should that also give you the rights of other privileges? Should you have the right to vote? Should you have the right to drink? Should you have the right to, as boss says, if you get married at the age of 16, 17, have a drink at your own wedding? Should you be able to have the right to, to go into a store and... Um, buy a pack of and buy a pack of cigarettes you know um if you are emancipated and um i'm going to go there because i'm going to get a little deep here if you are an emancipated minor at the age of 16 um and you are a girl and you date someone who is eight, who is 18 and you have sex with them, would that be called a statutory rape if that girl is an emancipated minor? Who is now living as an adult. So how far does it go? Let's see. Uh, okay, so Mama Barry, you're saying no, that is not statutory rape. Okay, Grit says yes. Shelby says no. Lou says, well, you're still not at the legal age of drinking and smoking. 16 is legal age for consent. All right, consent for, okay, okay, you're saying no to, to, to drinking. Okay. Okay, so 16 is the legal age for, for consent, but you still have some places, Lou, that if a 16-year-old, you know, has sex with someone who's 18 or over, it could be considered statutory rape. So once again, I say if this 16-year-old has, the 16-year-old female is emancipated, well, then should they... Um, Let's see, we also have some places where 10 year olds get married. Yes. And usually those 10 year olds are usually forced into marriage. Okay, somebody just popped in and wanted to come up and I, I missed who, who it was. I apologize. Um, Alpha says, what about pregnant women who will smoke and drink while pregnant? Is that kid legal? Is the kid legal to drink and, and, and smoke now? So you're asking me, is a fetus legal? to smoke are you saying because the the mother is smoking that she's now putting that that now is affecting the fetus so you're saying is the fetus legal yeah why put an age limit on it well i guess you you you, you shouldn't if you look at it like that i mean i guess you shouldn't so once again, if a minor is legally separated from their parents and legally means that they're emancipated, should they have all the rights of an adult? And what do you guys think of what Shelby said um, a, a little while ago saying that, you know, put put them on a trial basis and if they don't succeed you know they go back to their parents or they go back or or they go to to foster care let's see uh where can a 10 year old get married well 10, 10 year olds are getting married as far as i know it's mainly a lot of those middle eastern places but a lot of those are 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 forced and uh some of those kids are, are are sold to to help the family or whatever so 
uh, underage children should have a more lock it chance of becoming addicted than the old parents. Okay, Shelby, let me read this again. Underage children have a more locked chance of becoming addicts than the old parents. Are you saying underage? I'm a little confused there. Okay, Lou says Muslim um, countries. Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, it's like these kids are, I mean, these kids are, are being forced. Um, it's really hard to get emancipated. Um, you know, crazy lady, I think it's probably harder to get e emancipated um, probably now than it was back in the day, so so to speak. But I, I, I could be uh, be wrong. Okay, let me read this again. Underage children have a more likely chance of becoming addicted than the old parents. All right, so you're saying emancipated children, Shelby. I'm, I'm just trying to understand. You're saying that emancipated uh, children are more likely to become addicted. Oh, welcome, Power Girl. I don't know if I w w welcome you or not. Okay, you're saying, okay, scratch, scratch that. Okay. All right. All right. So, so guys, I mean, again, what do you think? I mean, do you think that emancipated minors should have the rights of an adult? which includes driving, drinking, smoking, everything. You know, if and if 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 you go get a job, I mean even though they're doing this now, but if you go get a job and they're, you know, taking taxes, you know, um should I get get benefits? You know, in that case, you know, if a minor is working, should they have the same amount of taxes being taken out considering that, you know, they're not paying utilities. They're not doing any of that, even though, yes, it's supposed to be there when they get older, even though we know it's probably not. But should these emancipated minors get the full benefit of being an adult? Should you have access to things that you normally would not have access to because you're considered a minor? But now you're emancipated. Should you get the full benefits? Let's see. Uh, Alpha says, um, bah, bah, bah. what does e emancipated mean? E emancipation is where you are legally separated from your parents, where you um, do not have to um, well, put like this, an emancipated minor is where you're illegally separated from your parent or from your 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 guardian. Emancipation basically means um, in some other cases where someone doesn't doesn't own you, um, where you are free, where you're able to go about and do whatever you you like. So an emancipated minor would be legally able to go and, you know, do what they like without their parents or legal guardian telling them no you cannot do that okay and then alpha says if you're emancipated then you should have a fair amount of rights as an adult more so to be able to have control over your financial funds etc so alpha let me ask you should they be able to vote should a 16 year old or 17 year old be able to vote and like I said, on those rare cases, uh, occasions where you hear that there have been some 14 year olds who have been e emancipated from their parents, should they be, be able to, uh, to, to vote? Okay, Shelby says yes. Lou says no, because they aren't at the legal age limits. Okay, but that's, that's my question. If you're emancipated, if a judge, if you're going to go into court and say, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be around, I don't want 
my mother and father to control me anymore because this, this, and this, and this. And, you know, usually they have to prove that they can do this, this, and this, and this, and you've proven that to the court. Then if I prove it to the court that I can live as an adult and on my own, then shouldn't I at least because I'm eman emancipated, get a pass to vote. You may not have to change the, the limit down to 16 or whatever, but if I can show that I'm an emancipated person and I'm technically an adult, why can't why can't I, I, I vote? Okay, Lou says drinking is still 21. I think it's smoke, yeah, smoking is, is 21 now uh, in, in a lot of states. Uh, Shelby says they are going to have to pay bills so that you have the same privilege of acting the adult if they want to be treated like one. And I... I agree with that. I think that they should have, have the privileges of, of an adult. Okay, Alpha says, I would say yes, uh, they should be allowed to vote, but also voting doesn't do anything. It's rigged from the start. Okay, uh, that is crazy. Depends on if they're like, like, like mature or not. Okay, so Mama Bear, again, I come back to, if you want to talk about the maturity level, Again, you have some minors who are a lot more mature and responsible than some adults. So who determines if you're mature? Because when you think of it, society says you're technically mature when you're eight, 18 or you're, you know, mature when you're when you're 21, you know, that you'll be able to, you know, go into a bar and, 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 and drink. But we all know that you can, you know, look, you know, down, down the bar and there could be a 40 year old person who's getting sloppy ass drunk, <laughs> you know, and there's some, you know, one of the most irresponsible persons and they can probably have three, three, three DUIs. So, uh, true, like my son, he, he could vote. Okay. All right. So, you know, I mean, when, let me put it like this. If, if your child came to you, the age of six, 16, and they wanted to be emancipated and they gave their, their reasons, would you listen to those reasons? I mean, seriously consider them or would you immediately say no? Now you have some parents, welcome uh, Vinny. Now you have some parents who um, they're just a mess. They're, they're just a mess. And the child is the responsible one. So they petitioned the court basically saying, my parents are a mess. This, this, and this, and this. I want to live on my own. You know, the judge may or may not say say yes or no. But if your child came to you and they, at the age of 16, and they wanted to be legally separated from you, would you listen to them or would you automatically say no? Uh, let me see. Alpha says, what about autistic kids who get emancipated? Should they get extra benefits or no? So you're saying extra benefits in terms of like a disability alpha okay and mama says he's smart enough he's 10. um <laughs> you got a lot of smart young kids today and Vinny says yes yeah, some parents are a mess lou says get out uh mama says to Vinny, i'm not a mess all the time shelby says i would Get out of my parents. I would get out if my parents were a mess. I I would have also have done that if my parents were a mess. Um, I never called you a mess. As some parents, uh, Vinny says to Lou says to Vinny, society has made everyone a mess. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, hey, hey, Juju, welcome, welcome. Uh, too smart. Okay. Uh, Mama says, I know, just, just bugging the Vinny. Okay, so, I mean, but would you, would you, would you seriously listen and, and consider it if your child came to you, and again, I'm saying they're, they're 16, or even if, if they were 17, if they were 17, and, you know, their birthday is, you know, either a couple months away, or it's, or it's the next year, what if on their 17th birthday, they said, you know, I'm 17 years old, 
I want to go out on, on, on my own. I don't, I want to be legally um, separated from you. I'm going to petition the court, you know, and they give their reasons. Um, and they have valid reasons. Would you guys um, consider it? Is this something that you would consider doing? Is this something that you would think about? You know, because the next year, more than likely, they're going to leave anyway if they're thinking about being e emancipated now. But would that would that stop you? Because, well, you're going to be 18 ne next year, so you can wait. Or would you consider it, well, okay, maybe, you know, whatever. Okay, no, but I want to know what is the problem. And Vinny says... Thank, th thank you, uh, Lou, for the gift. Vinny says, I feel that if the child is 18 or 19 and is mature enough to be to live independently, and he says that his parents are a mess and he has a right to leave them and live his life as per his own terms and conditions, no offense. Okay, but Vinny, at the age of 18, you're legally able to, to, to do that. At the age of 18, you can legally get up and leave. I'm talking about if you are under the age of 18 and you are still considered a minor and you are still legally attached to your parent or your guardian, or your guardian that they legally have responsibility over you. So yeah, if you're 18, you can pack your bags and, and, and leave. No problem, Bob. Okay. Uh, Mama Bear says, my son plans on living here forever. Tell him he has to take care of me. <laughs> right, Mama Bear? Uh, Lou says, I have to get back to work. Always great shows. Thank, thank you, Lou. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate you popping in. Um, <laughs> Lou says, the Mama Bear stopped peeking. Hey, Shorty. Welcome, welcome. Alpha says, once the kid gets experience paying taxes, they'll go back to the parents. Was paying taxes a whole whole bunch of other things. Um, so I think he will change his mind when he gets older. Okay, but again, you guys, my question is not if he's going to change his mind, not if he's going to get tired of paying taxes and coming back home, or, or he or she may not be able to make it. I'm asking you if your 16, 17 year old came to you and said they wanted to be emancipated. Would you immediately say no, or would you listen to them and find out why they want to be? And then when they told you, you would consider it, or would you immediately shut them down? Okay, so mom and bear, they, they, they tell you why, and... Um, they're serious, you know, and they think they have a, a valid reason, you know. Um, let me let me put it like this. Um, let's say your son or daughter is um, six, 16, 17. I'm going to say I'm even going down to fifth to, to 15. Let's say you got re, remarried and for whatever reason, your teenager did not get along with your new spouse, be it your new husband, be it your new wife, or let's say you're in a situation where you're, where you bring a boyfriend or girlfriend in, 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 into the home and your child just cannot live with this person. Would you let them become emancipated? And these, and these two people are constantly fighting. They just do not get a law what would you do alpha says i listen and say okay bye um i still say no okay alpha says nothing teaches you better than trial and error it'll make you stronger the man would be gone tracy for me yes um i wouldn't put my child through uh through through that okay uh so um I pick pick my son every time. Yeah, so would I. Well, welcome pillow talk. Um, yeah, Shorty says the man will be gone if I'm not with the child's father. If it's somebody else and my kid don't like them, 
it, it's got to be a reason. Okay, so so Shorty, then let let me ask this. Let's say it is the child's father or it is the child's mother. But that child, you know, you do have some some kids who don't get along with with their parents for whatever reason. What if that child did not get along with 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 their father? You know, um, if they did not get along with with their mother, it was just constant, just constant fights, whatever. Um, let's say it got physical. Um, and that child said, I don't want to live here anymore. I want to be you know, emancipated. I have a job. I'm going to do this. I, I can go live here, blah, blah, blah. Would you sign the, the paperwork? If they petition the court, would you sign off on it? And Mama Bear says, depends on why I kick the father out. Uh, oh, and thank you everyone for liking the show. I do appreciate it. So let's see. Um, okay, so Mama Bear, I mean, I just said, why? Um, you know, for whatever reason, they just don't get along or, um, you know, they, um, uh, um, let's say it, it got, it, it got physical. Okay. So what if you, what if you were married? Uh, welcome crucible and welcome fee or phi. Welcome. What, what if you're married and you, Again, you do have some households where a child does not get along with a parent. They're constantly butting heads, you know, to the point that it's just, if it's not getting physical, just a verbal, whatever. And it's affecting your marriage. It's affecting, if you have other children, it's affecting the other children in, in, in the house. And this one kid says, I want to leave. I want to live on my own. Is that reason enough because of what's going on? Vinny says, there are two solutions to this. Either the parent and 17-year-old child solve the problem, or if he is mature enough to leave at 17, and no matter how much parents and child try, if the problem is not solving, is not solved, and he should be allowed legally to leave at 17 or 16. I guess no, no disrespect though. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see. Um, Mama Bear says. My father beat me and I got kicked out then. I was 18. That's the last time he ever hit me. Okay. All right. But at 18, you were legally of of age. And I'm sorry that happened. Mama Bear. Alpha says, if you can get a job at the age of 16, then you're an adult. Make your own your own decisions. Okay. But you can't make your own decisions like that if you're still legally attached to your parents or your legal guardian. So if you're still attached to your, um, uh, if you're still legally, um, under the responsibility of your parents or your legal guardian whether you're 16 or not you're you're not going to be able to um uh i mean you could go off and leave but but legally you know you can get p picked up you know by the police or whatever and and taken back home so again if you're in a situation like like that um and there's no resolution, would you say yes? Would you sign off and say yes? Or, you know, um, you know, what do you do? What do you do? Uh, Crucible, welcome. Hello, everyone. I'm a little bit late here, but I think I'm picking up on, on the thread. Um, I, I guess in the example that you're framing here, my view, and I take the long view, if it's 
unless it's a situation of, of physical and mental abuse, and I don't know who would be the arbiter of that, if that would be a DCFS call, um, you know, the, the, the child in, in anything under 18, anyone under 18, I'm going to say, is it considered still legally a child? If you're, if you don't have independent observations, and I know the DCF people are not exactly rock solid these days in a lot of places, so I'm, I'm going to issue that caveat. But unless you have professional, independent, objective people who know how to ask questions and can evaluate with a clear eye a domestic situation, I know you're only there for an hour, you know, maybe twice a week, twice a month, whatever it happens to be, but some independent group should be able to say, I've been in the home, I've spoken with the parents, I've spoken with the child, the child is not accurate in this situation, in my view, so on and so forth, and we advise as long as there's no physical and mental abuse, and mental abuse cannot be, you can't use your phone for a week or you can't go out for a week because you didn't do X, Y, Z, that's not mental abuse, although that might be considered mental abuse to an 18-year-old or 17-year-old child. But I think there has to be some arbitration, somebody who says, no, this is not accurate, or yes, I agree with this. And should they be forced to compel with the DCFS recommendation? Under the age of 18, I think that they should. But I take the longer view. Um, we all went through things with our parents when we grew up. I, I, I sympathize very much with Mama Bear in the situation she went through. And anybody who suffers at the hands of their parents, the one person in the world you trust the most, or you're supposed to, you can't trust anymore. So my heart breaks for anybody who went through that. Absent that, I think long-term implications for a child who leaves the home, even at age 18, unless you're going into the military um, or into college where there's a structured environment there, where there's discipline and accountability and expectations and consequences, you're going to have a hard time as an adult. You need those underpinnings. Even into age 18, 19, 20, 21, you're not a fully formed adult. Legally, you're an adult. But I think we got to be very careful about getting too hung up on legal here. Is what's legal best long term for that child? Sometimes you got to suck it up and say, look, I don't you know, like it here right now. It's in your best interest to stay. Once you turn 18, you can afford a place of your own and you want to get a job. You don't want to go to college or the military. That's your call. You're an adult. I don't think you should do it. I think you're better off here for these reasons, because I don't think the short run, we've all made decisions as kids, short term decisions, and I've regretted a lot of them. Thankfully, I didn't make more because my parents were smart enough to make sure I didn't make any more. But I wanted to make some more. I wanted to move to Los Angeles at age 18 with my girlfriend at the time. No money, no job, no nothing, no housing, no nothing made perfect sense to me. I waited a day, I talked to my mother, and I was like, what the hell was I thinking? So th who knows how that would have turned out? So my point is, sometimes these short-term things, provided there's no physical or mental abuse, need to be endured for the long-term growth and, and fulfillment of that child. That's, that's just my view of it. Okay. All right. And I bring up the legal part of it because legally, at the age of 18, you know, or 19, you know, or in the UK at the age of 16, you are an adult. Um, legally, at the age of 21, you can drink and you, and you can, you can smoke. Legally, at the age of 18, here in the US, you, you can vote. So legal does come in, in terms of whether or not this um, uh, child is going to be e emancipated. But again, I'm, my question is, if you are in a situation where your child, if, you know, again, you married someone or you brought a girlfriend into the house or a boyfriend in, in, into the house, um, or, you know, maybe you have a blended family and one of the kids, you know, um, you know, you know, is bullying the, 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 the other kid, whatever, um, and you're the recipient of that of, of that bullying and your parents are like oh suck it up oh do this oh it'll get better whatever but it's not and it's uh, affecting you you know even if you don't get emancipated can you tell your mom or dad say i want to go live with 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 Aunt sue or uncle joe or whatever you know um how how many children have lived in homes where They've, you know, been sexually, uh, you know, abused by their own father, 
you know, and and I'm not even talking about the, the, the boyfriend or anything. I'm talking about by their own father. And they go to the mother and the mother has wanted to turn a, you know, you know, you know, blind eye, whatever, you know, um, what about situations like like that? For me, I'm sorry, I can't tell somebody to just to just to just suck it up if it's if it's a situation like like that. So I ask you if your child is dealing with that um, and it cannot be resolved and that child is responsible and that child, again, you know, let's say they are 17 and they're like, I know I, you know, I'm going to be 18 next, next year or whatever, but this is going on, you know, this isn't this, I'm just not getting along with this person. He's doing this, she is doing this, whatever. I want to be legally separated or what if they just moved out? You know, if they just left, you know, would you tell them to come back? What would you do? So those are some, some, some questions that I would have. You know, um, for me, if my parents would not allow me to leave and I was in a situation like, like that, um, and they did not want me to be emancipated and I'm going through a situation like that, I'm not saying that, you know, oh, you didn't give me my cell phone or oh, whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about some serious situations. And if there was no one else that, you know, would listen, whatever, because we know that sometimes the school systems, they don't even listen to you. I would probably just leave. So uh, let's see. Uh, let me go over here. All right. So does anyone else want to add anything? Um, let's see. Uh well, I think, I think you make a good point, Solid. I mean, if there's another adult involved, and that's kind of the key here, um, even if it's just an untenable situation, there's no real abuse per se, but they don't like living with their parents anymore. Like you say, they don't get along. They're not on the same wavelength. They don't understand each other. Those things happen. But as long as there's another adult involved, ideally another relative where you've got an existing relationship and they're willing to take you in, maybe they have other kids, you can live with your cousins. I'm fine with that. But once you turn 18, as much as I would advise against it, I don't have any legal authority over my child anymore. Like you said, the, the, the law affords voting and, and alcohol and cigarettes at, at age 21, but a lot of things are legal at age 18. And I can feel however I want to about my son or my daughter continuing to live with me. But if they're legal age and they have the wherewithal to live someplace else, you have to let them do that. I don't know that you legally have any any hold on them anymore. But any kind of an abusive situation, or even if it's not abusive, if you don't want to live with your parents anymore and you can work out a suitable alternative, as long as it involves another adult, I think that's a, probably a pretty plausible, particularly if this child is, is, is responsible and they've demonstrated that they can live potentially independently, they know right from wrong. You can tell that in kids at a fairly early age, which ones have it and which ones are gonna struggle. And if you're convinced that your child is is one of those that can stand on their own two feet earlier than some, then I don't think you have any options at that point. You can always say the door's open if you change your mind kind of a thing, but once kids leave home at a legal age, especially under adverse circumstances, they tend not to come back, not only not to live, but maybe not even to visit. So I think there's a point at which you lose control over that situation once your kid turns 18. Okay. Well, um, as I was saying at, at the beginning of, of, of the show, I was talking about situations, you know, where kids may have some challenges or I was throwing out different things. So, um, but even if a child, you know, but I was also talking about, you know, if your child said, came to you one day and just said, you know, I, I want to leave home. And they told you why, you know, and you said, no, what would you do if your child just left? What would you do if, if they, I don't, I don't want to use the term ran away. Well, welcome D DMAC, but they, they just left, you know, they still went to school. You, you, you know, they were going, going to school, whatever. You even knew where, where they were living, you know, would you go get them? And if they kept leaving, what would you do at some point? Would you just say, 
okay, they're not happy here. They're not coming back. Would you, you know, then in, involve the law, whatever, keep dragging this kid back. And they kept, I mean, what would you do? So, um, you're well, welcome. Well, in that situation, my heart would break, first of all, because even if your child has been threatening to leave, and you've had this guy ongoing argument slash conversation for many months, maybe many years. You don't take them seriously. They never follow through. But even if they're bound into. Okay, Crucible is breaking up. I'm assuming he got a phone call. Um... Okay, so again, your eighteen-year-old, your your eighteen-year-old Shelby, but your eighteen-year-old, you can't stop them. But what if they are under the age of eighteen and they were leaving, and they just left? Do you keep dragging them back? Yeah, I, I wouldn't do that either. I really wouldn't do that. Um, because once somebody decides to leave, it's like in a relationship. It's a little different because you're both adults, but. Once one or the other has decided it's probably over, it's over. It may not end on that day, but they've made up their mind that at some point they're going to go. And even though they may get back together a couple of times, eventually those things tend to be permanent. So I would not try to get the child back. It's clearly that ship has sailed. They don't have the respect for you. And if you don't have respect, you got nothing when it comes to most relationships, but certainly relationships with your child, because you're supposed to be the responsible one. They have determined in their view that you're not the responsible one, that they are better off at that age on their own or with other people. That's about as strong as an indictment against the parent as you can get. So I would say the door is open. I love you. I always will love you. But you are free to go and do what you want. I would never, ever go and try to retrieve that child. It will probably not end well. Okay. All right. Um, Shelby says, I would call the law then. Okay. So Shelby, again, you call call the law. The law comes. Um what do you do? You know, and they, and they keep leaving. And, and I can even say this, you know, there's someone who, who lives on my block. They live across the street from me. And for, um, for two years, the neighbors would see this girl would run away. Mom would call, call the cops that she would, they would drag her back, whatever. They're fighting out front, you know, whatever. Um, the next week, she's gone. The mom calls the cops. That went on, you know, for like a, a year. Then finally, it was like she left and the mom was like, she's gone. You know, they, 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 they got tired of it. So, you know, there was a reason she did not want to live there. There was a reason of, you know, what was going, going on. So... I, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's, it's disrespect for the parents because there are some parents where the children are more responsible than 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 the um, parents. So, Shelby, so at what point do you stop calling the uh, law? I mean, at what point do you just say, I just got to let them go? Offer to find out where the child is going. Okay. Okay, but... You know, what if you know? What if you know that the child is going to live with 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 their friend, you know, and and her parents, whatever. You know, you know where 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 this child is, and like I said, if they're still going to school, they're still doing everything except living with you. You know, at what point do you just say, okay? Uh, let's see. As long as there's an adult, I would be okay with that. Okay. So had a phone call. What did I miss? Basically, Mama Bear, we are um, um, talking uh, about the same thing. Um, now we're just talking about getting law enforcement in, involved. Um, are you asking me for the neighbor uh, across the street from me, why I know why the child left? 
or you're just asking, or Dia, you're, you're just asking just a general question. In this scenario, um, for my neighbor across the street, it 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 was um, it it was mom, Mary. Mom, the mother got uh, remarried. Oh, not, not 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 your neighbor. Okay. No, I mean whatever the 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 scenario is, whatever the the scenario is, but this child is leaving. So whatever the scenario is, this kid's leaving. So at that point, do you just go ahead and sign off and say, okay, legally, you know, they're on their own. I'm no longer re, re, responsible because what if it was something that this child did and they are a minor you're still technically re responsible for, for for them so does that enter in into your your mind would you c c consider it then okay you want to know why why they are leaving okay i mean every yeah everyone wants 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 to know why okay so guys i mean th this was you know um Again, um, that that was my, my my question today. Um, you know, should a minor be allowed to leave, or should they be placed with a relative or 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 foster care? Um, you know, do you immediately say no, or do you talk to your child and try to find out why they 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 want to leave? Um, how much should a court listen to a child more so than the parent? You know, um, if a child has, in their mind, a valid reason, you know, should the court con con consider that, you know? But I guess I have a question. What, what if we're, I'm assuming here, and maybe I shouldn't assume, that the child is at least 18 years old. Why would the courts even be involved at that point since this person would legally well, we're be? we're not talking about 18. That's why I say emancipation of minors. Oh yeah. Well, in that case, yeah. I mean, I think the courts would 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 unless there's evidence of physical or mental abuse. I think the courts would would dictate that that person goes back and lives at home without a suitable another adult in the picture because you're a minor, and that means by law, I think you need a an adult living in the home with you. I don't know if that's technically legally true, but I think that's pretty close. So if if that's the case, then you have a place to go, then you can go to that place with an adult. But if that's not the case, I believe the courts and the DCF and everybody else would just say, you've got to stay here until you're 18 years old. And I think it's fairly cut and dried. They don't generally allow minors to leave or remove them from homes without serious um, evidence of mostly physical abuse. Mental abuse is a little harder to prove, but they're very, very strict. They make a lot of mistakes, but they generally err on the side of, of, of advising that the child stay in the house. And if the child is not 18 yet, it's not even an advice thing anymore. They have to stay, I think. Well, I would not take the, and at least for the U.S. DCFS, I would not take their, their recommendation on practically anything, considering how many children they have put back into a, a, a abusive homes. And those children have died from the hands of the adult that was supposed to be uh, uh, caring for them. So if someone other than DCFS would have to come in and, 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 and intervene. Um, Mama Bear says, if someone wants to take my son now, I'm fine with that. He's so loud and playing with his friends. I find it hard to hear. Um, uh, let's see. So, yeah. So, I mean, you know, um, I, I'm not saying all DCFS is uh, is uh, wrong, but you have a lot of kids who have gone back to those to to those parents. You have a lot of kids who were in foster care and taken away from good foster homes and saying, well, they should be with, with their parents and their parents end up seriously doing, doing, um, doing harm. So for me, 
for me personally, I would have to have another person other than than, than uh, DCFS. No, you're 100 percent right. They do a lot of bad things. I think their hearts are in the right place, but whether they're understaffed or whether an agency that is so critically dependent on the welfare of children is so mismanaged. I know that's the case, but you're right. They make a lot of mistakes. They they are responsible and it's hard to find them legally culpable because they're just an agency. They're not the actual parents, but they have had their hands, their fingerprints on so many dozens, if not hundreds and thousands of cases across the country where the very scenario you just described happens on a all too frequent basis. So yeah, the DCFS people, bless their hearts, are not always the most capable agencies um, in the government. No, they aren't. And that's why, you know, um, earlier when you said to call in DCFS, I was kind of sh uh, sh shaking my head because it's like, you know, like I said, DCFS is one of the, the last places that I would call. Um, they are overwhelmed. They are they are overstaffed. There are some kids who literally have not been checked up on in in in, in years. So for you to come into my home and tell me the child that I don't know what I'm talking about and everything looks looks on fine. Uh uh. I, you're gonna have to bring in in someone else um, or not just automatically assume that the child is always wrong. But you, you know, assume, so. though, but I'm sorry I'm not to interrupt you, but a lot of times these families, they don't have any choice. They're forced to deal with DCFS. That's the agency that they, that they assign you to. You can call the police. You can call anybody you want to. They're going to they are going to assign this case 100% of the time to the DCSF group, D DS DCFS people. And if you're lucky enough to get a competent, responsible one, you might be okay. But if you find that you're dealing with incompetent or indifferent agency people and you get a red flag and you're like, I don't know about this. Could you call up the agency and say, I want a different person? I suppose you could. Would they do it? I doubt it. So a lot of these families don't have any other options. DCFS is it. Well, well actually, you know, would, would you have, have an, an option? Because you, the parent, would be the one bringing DCFS in, um, in, in the first place if you call it law enforcement or whatever. Is this something that you should, you know, as a parent and child, try to figure out on on your own because the only way DCFS is going to come in is if if the child or the parent open the, the door for DCFS or even law enforcement to come to come in. So are you just calling the cops because your child keeps running away? You know, if they tell you I don't want to live here because you know I don't like you 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 marry Pat, you know whatever and you, Pat and your son or daughter are constantly going um, I'm going back and forth and then your son or daughter you know they leave you're inviting to me the parent is inviting the law and DCFS and all these other people in I mean because they're because they're not going to know anything's going on unless you unless you well, tell them sometimes neighbors notice sometimes true. you know true. relatives do true parents are true parents who are truly abusive do not want dcfs anywhere near their home they don't invite them in voluntarily when they know they've created a very bad domestic situation they're not that stupid usually when you have a you, you have just a problem child dcfs is not going to be involved if you're just disagreeing with and you're fighting with your child about basic you know, domestic things, DCFS is not going to be involved. There has to be a red flag that comes up. Either they make routine visits and they notice something on a visit or a neighbor calls or something because a lot of these parents, abusive and, 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 and stupid as they might be, they're not dumb. And if they know they're creating a hostile situation, the kids are going to speak up. There'll be red, red flags when as soon as the person walks into the home, they'll be able to tell based on the cleanliness, based on all kinds of things, red flags are going to go up and, and, and alarm bells are going to sound. So most of those type of parents don't want DCF any, DCSF anywhere near their houses. Those those things generally get created by outside influences. I think it's my opinion. Right, I don't know right. Sure. But you, but when you first came on, though, you also said that you know have DCFS come in and e evaluate the, the 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 situation. You know, it's not going. You know, it's not going to be like, oh, they won't give uh, 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 give uh, give me my cell phone. And you do have a lot of parents that are very smart. You have a lot of kids that that are very smart that know how to play the system and know how to okay dcfs is coming over we know the right things uh, um things um things to say and if a dcf person is overwhelmed more than likely if everything looks quote unquote okay they rather 
deal with that as opposed to going through the 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 um and i am being being biased here against uh, uh dcfs um as opposed to you know wanting to go through the the work of the paperwork and everything to remove that child so yeah, and I was not endorsing DCFS. I was sort of acknowledging it as a necessary step in the process. You can't really skip DCFS. Uh, they, they won't let you. It's not an option. So I'm not saying you invite them in because they're going to wave a magic wand and everything's going to be great. A lot of times the opposite happens. It's just you're forced to deal with them until they've come up with some outcome or the status quo is allowed to continue. They're they're just not, you know, they're they're there because they have to be there. That's the agency that handles those things. And we can like it or not like it, but I wasn't advocating for them or endorsing their abilities. I was just saying at some point you're going to have to go through DCFS, like it or not. Okay. All right. Well, guys, uh, let's see. That's all, all, all I have, you know, I wanted to talk about um, minors today, and everyone has put in their opinions. And um, uh, let's see, Shelby says they are, ooh, excuse me, they are as crooked as politicians. Um, Angie, hey, welcome. And I apologize, welcome solo, welcome. Um, that's that's all, all, all I have. Um, um, I have not posted shows for the rest of the week. Um, I will post tomorrow's show. <laughs> <laughs> so but I, I will do that but thank you everybody for coming um again everyone gave their different uh, opinions um which was varying and once again i appreciate every appreciate everyone coming so uh crucible for coming up and everyone else in the chat and of course everyone for liking the show so until then i will say go where the wind takes you and i hope to see you tomorrow bye And to people listening over on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. D, I'm not sure. I'm I I'm I'm going back and forth between two particular ones. Um, then I have have a third one, so I'm not a, exactly sure what tomorrow's show is, is going to be. But I will post it. Um, it will be be posted later on today. Thank you, Shelby. And Shelby, thank you so much for um, popping in yesterday on yesterday's show with me and Bob. Thank you. Shorty, Shorty, thank you. Mama Bear, Juju, Grid, Alpha was here, Power Girl, Frankie, Ninja was here. Thank you, everyone. So until then, I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey.